The Tunnel is an investigative program where we delve into the depths of certain stories that were presented to us but aren't exactly as they seem. In The Tunnel, we will try to uncover the subtleties that are hidden between the lines, missed due to laziness or carelessness while reading or listening. The Tunnel is where we will shed light on all that they have wanted to keep hidden. How can one read the Bible and understand it? When reading the biblical document, particularly the Old Testament or Torah, many readers eventually reach a point where they stop reading, either from boredom or because they don't understand what they're reading. They see too much incoherence in their reading and even contradictions with the God who is presented as the single and only real God. Why does this occur? The translations we tend to have at home, available to us, are completely manipulated and adulterated in terms of the language used within them. In an earlier post, I explained that religions teach us that the God of the Old Testament is the only real God for all of humanity, something totally false, as this character known as Yagwil or him, as per Deuteronomy 32, 8-9, was given a family, not the people of Jacob. The question then is, who gave him that family as an inheritance? Could only someone older than him give him a territory, a town, or a family as an inheritance in this case? For this question, there are always responses from religious people who rashly respond to things like this without thorough investigation. No, it is that the Most High is Jehovah himself. He chooses Israel as his people, or a response like the one a good friend of mine gave me. No, the Most High is the Father, and Jehovah is Jesus Christ himself, and the Father gives the nation of Israel to Jesus as his people. No, 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 honestly, no indoctrinated person will give you a coherent answer, since they just repeat what they've been taught as absolute truth. Who taught them? another person who learned from what someone else taught them, and so on. But then, how should we read the biblical document and understand the information found within? The first step we must take, as seekers, is to search. But what are we going to look for? Since we aren't proficient in Hebrew and Aramaic, we must look up some of the terms that many of these words were written in their original language. As I mentioned in a previous post, religions have based their beliefs and faith on translations, but the biblical document has been translated from its original language, Hebrew Aramaic, to different languages over time. It's well known that when we translate from one language to another, the translation is not word for word, as there are languages that have an absence of terms and concepts. Let me explain. If I translate the phrase, it's raining cats and dogs from English to Spanish, the Spanish translation would be, esta lloviendo a cantaros. In other words, it's raining dogs and cats. For us, in our language, it makes no sense, but for them it does. And the same thing happens with the translations of the biblical document. So, to understand it, we must refer back to its original language and look for specific terms. And this is what we will do. Where we find the following words, we will replace them with the original ones and thus we will understand better and the reading will become much more coherent. For instance, where it says God or gods in the biblical text, the word that would go there would be Elohim, which is a plural of El or Eloha and comes from a Hebrew root meaning strength, ability and power. When we read the Most High, we substitute the phrase the Most High and put in Elion. Elion means the one who is above. We can see this in Deuteronomy 32, 8 to 9. When Elion assigned the nations their inheritance, 
when he divided up mankind, he set up boundaries for the people according to the number of the people of Israel. For Yahoo's portion is his people. Jacob got the inheritance that was attributed to him. When we see the word, the omnipotent, the word that we should substitute and put is Chade, which means Lord of the step or the mountain. For example, this is found in Genesis 17, 1, where we see the word, the eternal or eternity. The word corresponding to that is, the real translation is world and can refer to Don Olam, which means the Lord of the world. But in biblical translations, they interpret it as the eternal one. For example, Genesis 21:33. When we look at the word glory, like glory of Jehovah, the corresponding word for glory is weight or gravity in its ancient meaning. It currently means respect. Religion has replaced the word cabot with the word check. This check word is not found in the biblical document. It has been placed intentionally and given meaning to religious people as the place of rest. For example, in Ezekiel 43 from 1 to 5. Then he took me to the gate, to the gate that faces the east. and I fell flat on my face. And the glory of Yahweh entered the house by the way of the gate facing the east. And the Spirit lifted me up and took me to the inner court. Behold, the glory of Yahweh filled the house. Wherever we see the word angel, the corresponding word is malak. And malakim is the plural where we see Adonai the translation. The original is my master. An example is Psalms 91. This is a short example with which you can start. This way you will be able to understand the biblical document a little more. Of the history of this town and the technology that 
they used these Elohim that in reality were not just one. There were many who physically lived with the men of the past that came from other places in the galaxy. They could also die like humans do, but this will be a topic for another study. If this information was useful, give it a like, so that YouTube can get this information to more search engines, and also share this video. Support us by subscribing to the channel. Ring the bell, so that every time we upload a video, you'll be notified. We will wait for you in the next video. Greetings.